So a few years ago, I received an email from a mountain climber in the United States, and he was looking for information about a Mount Stranach that he wanted to climb. He couldn't find any information about it, so he googled the name, found me, and wanted to know what I knew. Problem was, I didn't know anything. I'd never heard of this mountain with my surname. What I did know was that my family are the only Stranix in Canada, so there must be a connection. A couple of years earlier, I'd worked on a BC Place Names project at the Vancouver Public Library, so I knew of a government resource that might be able to help. So I went to the site, did a search, and sure enough, there was indeed a Mount Stranach, but it lacked any information about the source of the name, but now I was intrigued. When in doubt, ask. I emailed the contact person at the site and received a reply that, while she didn't have any direct information, she did know that the area was surveyed by Frank Swanell in the early part of the 20th century. Furthermore, she knew of Jay Sherwood, a teacher and historian in Vancouver, who'd written a book on Swanell, and that he might have more information. She also asked that if I found out anything further, that I'd share it. I was able to find Jay's email address online, and I contacted him about my quest. Sure enough, he was working on a second book on Swanell, and this one was covering the period when he was surveying the part of BC I was interested in. And he was able to confirm that Swanell often named newly surveyed mountains after members of his crew, and this particular mountain I was interested in was named for Robert Stranach. Jay also let me know that Frank Swanell was an avid photographer and took thousands of pictures throughout his long career, and included in his photo collection were some photos of the young crewman named Robert Stranach. Unfortunately, he didn't have any further information about him, but if I found out more, he wanted to know about it too. Now, I don't know much about my family history, but I did know that my grandfather's name was Robert, and I also knew that he would have been about the right age at that time. I'd never seen a picture of him, but I was intrigued to go online and take a look. Seeing the photos confirmed my suspicion. He looked exactly like every male member of the family I'd ever seen. This was definitely him. At this point, I really wanted to find out more. Now my dad died when I was a boy, so I needed to find someone who could help me fill in some of the details. I'd kept up an irregular connection with my aunt, so I contacted her and told her my story so far, and she was able to provide me with much of the missing information I was looking for, information that was now also of interest too the historian, the geographer, and the mountaineer. It turns out my grandfather was born on the 30th of March, 1903, at Tutikoran, India, where his father worked for the Commercial and Land Mortgage Bank Limited. He was educated at the Bedford School in the UK from 1913 to 1919, and emigrated to Canada in 1920 to work on the farm of a family friend in Nova Scotia. By 1922, he'd moved west to look for work, and this would be when he found his way into the crew of Frank Swanell and started surveying the mountains of central BC, including the one that now bears his name. I was also able to learn about his marriages, children, work, and early death in Smithers, BC in 1963, three years before I was born. Armed with this information, I then reconnected with Jay and let him know what I'd found out. And he eventually included some of the details in his book and even sent me a signed copy. I then contacted GOBC again and shared with them what I'd learned. And that information is now available on their website. And of course, I replied to the original poser of the question, the American Mountaineer. I don't know if he ever did climb Mount Stranick, but I know I'd like to at least visit it one day. So why am I sharing this story? I thought it revealed the importance of technology in allowing people to connect and access information quickly and easily. But more importantly, it illustrates the importance of the connections themselves. There is this group of people, 
who all became interested in acquiring some knowledge, but we all needed to rely on our connections to one another to get what we wanted. No single one of us was able to do it alone. We did it together, and I think some of the best kinds of learning happen that way.